12-3-2011 Worldwide ETFs versus USA. What are we looking at is that we do have a list of worldwide ETFs that have been marked back up. We're going to take a look at their monthly level. The one that we're looking at here is the EZA right now, and the EZA is the iShares. Okay, it's the South Africa. It's a monthly chart, every one of them. This is your low and your highs on the last trading day on 12-2, and there's your 52-week high at 77.58. But also the 52-week low was 54.64. So these are all shortable during various different economic events worldwide. Central bankers, Bernanke, Merkel, all of them doesn't matter. What matters is that we're going to go through them. We're going to understand where they're at as far as support and resistance levels go. South Africa ETF. EZA iShares, here they are. Here is the volume, total volume, 474,289 shares traded with historical volume at 217,000 with a 52-week low of 54.64 and a low intraday on Friday's closing bell of 62.79 and the high of 64.60. There is a yield with a 52-week high naturally at 77.58. Why is it important that we go through them? Because we will just go right through them. One of them is going to be this one here and it's Japan and it's iShares and it's on a monthly low level we all know about the earthquakes but it's a calendar year and we want to know exactly who's participating and who is not because using a diversified worldwide risk management of ETF a bear and bull both the same one's a bear one's a bull and so forth and whatnot and we're at a very major level of support for Japan and its ETF model and it trades right here there is the amount of shares EWJ there are your stats 52 week low 8.83 with 11.63 high once again when you're doing these particular trades there are bears that also but each one can be sold short we just like to know where they're at on the calendar yearly low that nonetheless they're at the low so another one that we're going to look at would be this volume one and we're doing this live and we're doing it here now uh, look at ostrich right here Australia I, I'm sorry it's Australia but look at here and this is it right here and here are your stats 52 week low 52 week high 28.36 on the high 52 week high low 52 week low low 1891 range 23.29 23.69 not a high yield were you know they are if they're used correctly in a longer term basis MMTs nonetheless you can see that the calendar year for Australia has improved right along with the broader worldwide catastrophes that have been going on. It's very important that we stay focused on this particular one. How does this play? It's the FXE. And the thing about it is we've covered it. Here's a monthly level of it. It's, it would be applied to your worldwide ETF structure. You can clearly see here that when this is going up higher then equities do well and you can see where the calendar low monthly monthly low was on the FXC currency euro trust was that we had built a really good move when there was a lot of injection and we made up these all-time highs now with the catastrophe in Europe you're coming down to multi yearly monthly lows at these support lines that are very crucial where previous breakouts had occurred on this one right here was where your breakout started on a monthly level and you started that monthly level breakout right there to that 2008 high when the financial crisis got bad 
hey, you got down to these lows and you finally put in uh, monthly lows here and then off to the races you went when the world was getting good with all the stimulus is coming in. That's how the FXE relates to breakouts and equities do well too. They sure do well when that goes higher. Right now it's on a calendar yearly low and that's going to affect all of these ETFs here. Okay and it's very important that people understand how to use them correctly. Here's the EWI guess what it is it's the Italy one and you can clearly see here that your total volume was very light and the number of trades that were actually involved in the ETF itself but it's good to know that this was their high but what do you want to know you want to know exactly where the lows are calendar year wise you're right here right now and you've gone straight down. Why? They have a debt crisis and we all know it. And there are ways to gauge worldwide markets across the, the finish line. That's just one of them at the yearly lows. Uh, now that the financial crisis is supposedly going to, be going to get better with the Federal Reserve cash infused injection, is how does how how does uh, Italy fare from here? You know, if this multi-year calendar monthly low holds, which it has, is there could be upside to 16 back in here. So once again, depending on liquidity worldwide, liquidity will ultimately be a lot of what's really going to happen in here. And let's take a look at the EWG. This is going to be your iShares here again and it's a monthly level of this area. It's at its calendar yearly lows but nonetheless this is the ranges here on this one, on the German one. And we know with all due respect to their governments and their regulations is they have a pretty good size they have a big say so in what's happening worldwide in the banking system and we'll have special subjects for that but here it was their highs when things were doing well equities across the board and they too had their major ranges here on the German one but listen what role are they going to play in the worldwide financial crisis why would there be upside look at the calendar yearly lows in here they're holding not only are they holding well, hey, they are ascending on a monthly level, and you can see it right here. There it is. And you're up above these half bars and whatnot, and you're up here at this wall of resistance, this, this, this particular line. And the thing it is, from the original 2009 low on the German one, as I want to draw a monthly trend line right through here, that's going to be that resistance level right here, right here on the upside this this monthly if these things build bases down here going into the end of the year we're going to be monitoring for one reason the better that their systems get the better it's going to be for what US equities and we know that so there is the German one they're a big player and stuff but now you just got to remember they're ETFs but they still represent where their highs and their lows are and how they correlate with US equity indexes along with options along with futures and many other things but most importantly is that uh, what will happen is that when things are good you're up here and you're breaking out okay period 2009 breakout you had a good one this was another one in Germany and it had two of them now we pull back to where the original breakouts and a lot of these ETFs are coming through their original 2009 lows that's pretty scary when you look at some of the indexes around the world because for one reason and one reason only and I can tell you why is their weakness is not good for US earnings and how that correlates and gets put into the risk management plan and
and that's where you have to take a look at these and there are bull and bear uh, ETFs of course there, there are other ones that you can get on the other side of this but when you take a look and get real constructive I can come through here if there and that's and it comes right through the, the, the bottom lows here this diagonal trend line that's where that ascending monthly breakout happened on this one and it's very important to know if the Germans do the right thing and you have enough liquidity injection going into the system these things could hold these lows and there's upside however they're not intraday market maker trades they're more of a uh, uh, they're very diversified in one respect is that when you put the group of the right ones together both bear and bull relative to the worldwide crisis which we know a lot about and when a big bank goes down lots of things happen around the world and I can tell you that wholeheartedly and when the Fed got involved the US United States of America already owns a good part of Europe it's probably around 18 percent or higher but it was done with money that no one knew anything about at the time they were called injections into the liquidity system they are normally injected at systemic risk levels and that's when you start to see that behavioral structure change within the worldwide liquidity markets that have that interconnectivity in a global banking finance relationship and it's very important to understand what some of the leaders are and who they are okay so just for the MMT structure is you're gonna have to see for 2012 that these major ETFs that have all the problems and the ones involved in it who is actually going to come out ahead and for what reasons and how are you going to weight the worldwide risk because right now off of the same lows of 2009 you're going to come right into here where you're at right now on this monthly chart and I just drew it and that's the kind of pattern you're in as far as this area on this last four month area with all this upside monthly resistance on all of these things that if they go up and fail you can short them and make money worldwide ETF update relative to what we'll be talking about in the next segment of where our S&P is and our calls and our puts and you know how to apply index options and how to regulate worldwide risk as far as what do you always want to be looking at here's the Austria right here okay this one and you're making your monthly lows so basically what you want to take a look at is when when good times are working you can see they all have the same pattern you can see on the monthly level here where they have their major breakouts because they did and here's where they pull back to was this calendar yearly low and this one too they all have a similar pattern because they're all in the same problem all right and it's very important that when you start looking at worldwide indexes what led those market rallies in 2008 was your emerging markets acted much better than your US equity markets did once again Austria okay iShares EWO Austria they're all back down here where these ETFs because that's or I call them that there's all kinds of forms these are the iShares. shares okay they all tick differently but they all have a correlation to strength and weakness as always that is why we monitor these very carefully this one here they they had great rallies right here was a major 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 low of 2010 and we broke to those highs but then it wasn't really truly confirmed 
that this is where your first wall of resistance was in 2009. 2010, things didn't look well and everything went down, but then they got to be appearing to be a lot better. They rallied them all the way up here to the highs. And look, they're way down here now. Okay, so there's Austria as well. I'm going to conclude that we want you to be aware of the Framps on a monthly level. They're a big player. Framps. Uh, as far as this instrument goes, there are other ones that are tied as well, MMTs. But nonetheless, they all have the same thing in common. Where the big rally started for these uh, worldwide markets, their indexes and everything are going to look like these uh, iShares. Okay. So basically, once again, they all had something in common. This was the great part of the financial crisis for the U.S. This was where they all thought that during this 2010 low here, that's when you had a QE2 by the U.S. We were injecting money. That's what Ben Bernanke and your Federal Reserve does. And that's how you went from here to this top. And it got that exuberant. Multi-months. One, two, three, four, five months down. If you take a look at our indexes and how to correlate France to our markets, you'll see identically the same thing. My point being is that the weighted risk, worldwide weighted risk, are at extreme high levels, will remain that way. What is going to happen is that the Federal Reserve has injected liquidity into the marketplace along with all of these ETFs that we're looking at, all these countries. They got banks and everything all set up. They got the IMF. You've heard of that. That's for a different segment, though. You can get involved in the SMF Economic Radio Show. You can sign up there at stockmarketfunding.com for it, and you'll enjoy participating in that. Now, back to when QE3 is around the corner. And because of QE3 injection, liquidity, and we talk about the financial system cannot suffer a severe liquidity markdown process because of the inter- national relationships with the U.S. structure, both in earning cycle and exchange models as well. And there are a lot of big hedge funds around the world that may have to redeem those holdings on a collateral debt risk ratio management liquidation format that could easily take a very major role in U.S. equities in forward-looking time frames in the 2012 overall market structure worldwide because you have to understand that yes the world can grow at a lower growth rate as it will however the liquidity in the banking system my friends is a totally different common denominator and psychological behavior where people worldwide start stampeding their banks and people have to liquidate assets because of collateral risk liquidation, meaning that equities are prime subject because equities have performed well in the last few years. And if they have to liquidate in times in 2012, you could see some very good bear time opportunities, bear movements down, as you will. Uh, you'll see that on the tape here, uh, the QE3 potential injection would hold all of these ETFs, and particularly France here. It's just t to look at where you had nice, when, when the world was kicking and stimuluses were, were working, this is what was going on. 
and all of them have the same behavior and you had monthly breakouts to the highs but you had um, no matter what 2009 it started you, you got a double leg in that 2010 in it but look at where they're all at look at where they're all at now if I throw in the S&P 500 here and this is the EWQ iShares France EWQ monthly chart iShares France relative to monthly S&P 500 in France will look about the same structure and why do I say that they all have the similarity one two three four five months down in the S&P and what did now 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 what did France do or what did any of them do here watch this one EWZ watch Brazil which has got now I haven't showed you Brazil but Brazil looks just like the S&P and I'm going to show you right now this Brazil and why is worldwide Brazil important is because hey different emerging markets in developing countries have different growth capacity levels based on their regulation their government regulations we're going to regulate what this is and I just so showed the monthly S&P 500 going the same direction and they all have that same correlation and can you make money shorting this down yes absolutely and why is Brazil always a good one to be on but look at the monthly lows look at the long term here's a 2009 monthly consolidation not only that MMTs the reason why our worldwide diversified risk management both for bull and bear entries where the world is weighted within the price action structure based on its financial severities that we all know are in play so what if they inject the money you're gonna hold the lows and you will have another event where all of these can go back up and test these are all monthly moving average deteriorations here and I can tell you right now that the lows this one's acting better than a lot of them they didn't come down here on the monthly chart right here because they didn't not yet but they could if things get bad it's potentially there and if you take a look at the low ranges over an extended period of time over here on the Brazil one here hey the low was 31 and you made a high up here listen you made a high of eighty dollars that was a good trade to be in for a calendar we know because we were involved in the whole move to the upside that's why we know then you had that 2010 contagion that came in and you could never ever take out these monthly tops and it went down just like the S&P so they do have that correlation that I'm talking about that relationship between them all and they also have a monthly consolidation based on Fed liquidation meaning that what has the Fed done it means that they have given it enough money or enough injections of some kind to keep the system from defaulting and that is when the US Fed gets involved okay so all eyes will be out on the worldwide ETF structure this is a Saturday training with the SMF apprentices apprenticeships yearly apprenticeship people and I'm going to basically end it this way and I'm going to end it very clear and very clean cut here on the monthly chart look when you had fed liquidity it was here is when that fed liquidity came in in QE2 around the world and Brazil went higher all right when we had this new liquidity injection with the fed in calendar 2011 
at the November 30th, first, the last day of, of uh, November. They decided that several of these banks would get involved and that they would do what would be needed to finally put a chapter and close that chapter with the public that there would be no more problems. However, however, with Fed liquidity, it can give stability in the shorter time frame that could hold support levels and even breakouts again because that was a liquidity injection in the in the US and that's how uh, Brazil uh, performed and went with it but also look at here look at that drop now watch this is Brazil at EWZ now watch the S&P 500 watch here it is and it's important for you to see the very same thing right here on a monthly level and we called that top along with all of these uh, iShare tops and these ETFs it's a way to monitor where the bull is failing and the bear is gaining at that time in that time frame that's what happened now we're in a new element and we're you know and the S&P looks just like that ETF I just showed you that Brazilian one the EW whatever it was here EWZ yeah it's right here EWZ look there it is just like the S&P mm -hmm. we will be making our 2012 forecast adjustments accordingly with all of the worldwide ETFs both bull and bear structure within the risk management profiles that will be written and then submitted with the stop loss management programs that will also be written as part of the overall program. 